Okay. As I was mentioning to Sergeant Legassi, the official story says the plane came on the south side, on the south side, and hit the light poles right here. No uh, chance. What's that? There's no chance. If, and as a matter of fact, I know for a fact that this light pole, well, you can't really see it, but there's a light pole here that was knocked down, and there was a light pole here that was knocked down. Not any over here. They were here. And there's no way the plane was over here. If anything, the only indisputable fact is the angle was different. That it was closer this way. Mm -hmm. But it had to be on the side. It had to be on the north side. It, there's no way it was on the south side. I can't see. I don't have eyes in the back of my head. Right. It was, you know, the only thing that is even debatable here, and you look at Chad's next to mine, is the only thing that's debatable is... Maybe it was closer. Maybe it was further away. But it was on that side. None of these light poles over here were knocked down. They were here. None of these were knocked down. They were here. Let official say story we, says they were. What official story? The only official story would have been the Arlington County Police Report done after the event. There's no official story other than that. That's the after action report that was written by Arlington County, the fire department and police agencies that responded along with the United States Pentagon Police at the time, Defense Protective Service. Mm -hmm. That's the official story. Anything else isn't official. It did not come on this way. I've never seen anything that said it was on the south side of that gas station, ever. Okay. Ever. Okay. I will. That's the only, you know, I'm, I'm trying to maintain an even strain here, but these were the light poles. This is where the taxi cab was. Right here. Not over here. Nothing happened over here. Period. Okay. So I can't be any clearer about it. Than that. Great. Thank you. In light of this quadruple corroborated testimony, it makes no sense to continue to suggest that the plane flew on the south side of the station. Therefore, it has been demonstrated beyond a reasonable doubt that the physical damage was staged and that the plane couldn't have really hit the building at all. The notion that all four witnesses are so completely incorrect about such a simple right or left detail during an event of this magnitude is simply not a viable consideration. Clearly all of the witnesses were convinced the plane hit the building, but we know if where they all placed the plane is remotely true that this cannot be what really happened. So how were they fooled? Naturally this question seems to be a difficult one to answer. But in light of this groundbreaking eyewitness testimony, it's necessary for us to hypothesize about how this operation of deception was carried out. It's important to note how all of these witnesses were aware of what had transpired in New York earlier that morning. At this point, both towers had been hit by planes, leaving no doubt that the nation was under deliberate attack. Because of this, many of the eyewitnesses to the plane in Arlington had claimed that they instantly knew what was happening when they saw a commercial airliner flying extremely low and fast over the area. Their minds were already conditioned to believe the plane would hit a building. With a low-flying jet airliner heading straight for the Pentagon, timed perfectly with a massive explosion, it stands to reason how people would instantly believe the plane hit the building, even though it really flew over the building. It was a classic sleight-of-hand illusion. If the plane flew through the fireball and over the building, there is no reason that anyone watching the explosion would think anything other than the plane had hit. So it's quite possible the plane could have slipped away unnoticed by anyone on the Arlington side who witnessed the explosion. There isn't much on the other side of the Pentagon until you cross the Potomac River into D.C. According to the official NTSB flight path, the plane never flew over D.C. at all, so the people on the other side of the building would not have seen the plane approaching. They would have no clue as to what had just transpired. If they saw a plane flying away, it could have easily been confused with regular air traffic at a Reagan National Airport. Across from Lloyd the cab driver is Father Stephen McGraw, a Catholic priest with ties to the ultra-secretive Opus Dei sect. Father McGraw was a former U.S. Department of Justice trial attorney for five years. He left that for the seminary, which he stayed in for four years until he became a priest three months before 9-11. He is a prime example of someone who admits they deduced the poles being hit and hitting the cab, rather than actually seeing it. He told us this personally when we interviewed him at his church. Here is the often cited quote from his account about the light poles. The plane clipped the top of a light pole just before it got to us. 
injuring a taxi driver whose taxi was just a few feet away from my car. Well, um, I had been um, a trial attorney for the Justice Department uh, for about five and a half years and then had gone into the seminary for four years to study for the priesthood, was ordained in 2001 in June, and about th this was about three months after my ordination as a priest when I found myself on the way to a graveside service and prayers to say at the graveside at the Arlington National Cemetery, which is right near the Pentagon. And I basically made a turn too early um, on my way to the service at Arlington National and ended up right in front of the Pentagon on Route 27, which goes just right, right in front of the building. Know it was the I didn't even know it was the Pentagon. I mean, I've grown up, I've grown up uh, in this area, um, but I just am basically never over there. Besides, you can't really tell it's five-sided anyway, so I never, I didn't even know it was the Pentagon, so, but I was just in traffic. My main focus was that I was late for this service and we were stuck in totally standstill traffic, just sitting dead still on the highway. Uh, with the rest of the cars right right in front of the uh, lawn there. Um, I was in the left lane of the highway of Route 27 um, on the way um, with the Pentagon on my right. So I was on, on, the, on the traffic side of traffic closest to the Pentagon. And basically, without warning, there was just the sensation of something coming over the top of us. I didn't see anything in that in that first that first instant, but it was just a sense of something coming over the top of our car, it seemed to be about 20 or 25 feet. It seems the plane was so low that it hit a light pole uh, that was um, just um, on the edge of the highway, on the, on the far side there, um, before it came over the highway, it clipped this pole, which I heard ended up being knocked over and hitting a taxi, which was near, near my car. Now, the, do you remember which pole it was, or did, was it the entire pole itself, the large part, or was it uh, east? That's a good. That's a good question. Um, um, my recollection is is vague on that point, but um, you just saw it bounce over and just kind of. I didn't the actually street. see the light pole go over or anything. No, I, I believe I, I later saw you know the evidence of the the pole having been knocked over, okay. um, and I think that was just that after the fact saw the you evidence. Do see it. Piece of the piece of the light pole. I think I may have only recall seeing the top part of the pole. So maybe that was the only part that actually got knocked off. And it may not have been the entire pole getting knocked down, but um, there was that. I think that may have been the first noise, perhaps, in that first second that was that was sensed. The noise of clipping the light pole, because then the next instant was simply, I guess, the natural reaction looking over to my right, because the plane came right over, and the, and I did see the plane as it came in. My recollections are simply that it came in somewhat controlled and straight. I mean, my, my sense was that it was coming in for a crash landing. I remember when I was about 14, um, the Air Florida uh, plane crashed uh, in the four, into the 14th Street Bridge right here in Washington my sophomore year in high school. And just again, a tragic accident just shortly after takeoff. And the, the, the pilot just, that was, I guess, the best he could do. And so that was my sense, although it seems so strange to crash, but just that he had, some, some, whatever had happened, that he was just um, making that crash landing, but just did it right, right in front of the building and, mm -hmm. and then crashed into the building immediately. Did it hit the trailers? There was trailers, I suppose, that, that, that were out. There was a generator trailer, and then there were, were there other trailers that it hit, that it flew into? Or? I did not, did not see anything like that. Um, I will say that I have a memory, um, which which was you might say revived after the fact of the plane uh, bouncing on the lawn before it went into the building. I, that what my um, that came to me basically after actually hearing other witnesses, a hearing of other um, witness testimony. I heard that other witnesses had reported that the plane had bounced, you know, had, had hit the ground before it it. it crashed into the building and then that then I, when I heard that I thought I kind of it sort of um, provoked something or um, and I thought yeah that's the image that's the Im 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 image I remember having I think I kind of had the image at first and then it sounded so seemed, seemed kind of strange that it would actually have bounced first in that in that split second 
And then it kind of came back to me more after people said that. I thought, well, yeah, that is how I, that is my impression of what happened. That it bounced first onto the, on hit the ground at some point, furry, hit the ground and then went into the building. The memory that was clearest that I had from the very beginning, which never left me, was just after the crash, the plane just dis disappearing, I mean, into the building basically, just disappearing. But then just the, the, these two, out of the top two windows of that side of the Pentagon, um, just this, these two huge billows of, of like fire coming out of the, t uh, the top two, top two right windows. They were, they were, I mean, the plane, I guess, came in lower, but somehow it seemed like it was those top two windows, more or less in the middle of the building, that the, the flames just came, just came billowing out. And, yeah. and, and at the same time as, you know, the explosion and everything, there's those two, just the, those two billows of flame, it seemed, out of, the, out of the top two windows, was what I recalled. Okay. Did, and you immediately, immediately after the plane had crashed, you can't, got out of your car about right. 45 seconds later, right? Perhaps about 45 seconds later, yes. My, 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 my plane was, my car was in the left-hand lane, and after that initial moment when I seemed to remember the kind of the gasp, you know, around me from the other cars, no one, of course, was going anywhere in the traffic, so it was, it was in a sense, easy enough to just um, grab my prayer book for the sick and the dying, uh, my holy oils for anointing the the sick and the dying, and my um, my purple stole, which priests wear when they're administering when they're ministering to the uh, to the neat to um, the sick, and so I got out of the car and just left it there and walked across the the one or two lanes of traffic, whatever it was. I was always in the left hand lane, walked across the rest of the traffic, um, and just went over to the guardrail and just was on the lawn there, maybe in the first you know to about a, yeah, a minute or so I guess. And, and you actually saw it enter the building. Yes. And it came in. Yes. Okay. Yes, I definitely watched as it, as it went into the building. It's important to note that light poles 3 through 5 were perfectly within Father McGraw's field of vision, but he only makes reference to the light pole that hit the cab that he actually deduced. His account is often cited as witness to the light poles being clipped, but you heard him just admit to us that he did not see any light poles clipped and merely deduced this after the fact. This is the case, although he claims the cab was a few feet from his car. Interestingly, he says he grew up in the area, was a Justice Department attorney for five years, and claims he didn't know the building he was next to was the Pentagon. Why then would he know where the 14th Street Bridge was, which is right next to the Pentagon? He admits he got out of his car within 45 seconds after the crash and crossed the guardrail to help console the dying and wounded. The problem is, Mark Farum, Navy Times photographer, remembers it differently. I was at the Navy Annex, up the hill from the Pentagon, when I heard the explosion. When the explosion happened, I ran down the hill to the site and arrived there approximately 10 minutes after the explosion. Then on a military press site, he literally had the stole in one hand and a prayer book in the other, and in one fluid motion crossed the guardrail, said Mark Farum a reporter from the Navy Times, who witnessed McGraw in the first moments after the crash. How can Mark Farum witness Steve McGraw cross the guardrail within 45 seconds of the crash when he wasn't there for 10 minutes? One or both of them is either remembering inaccurately or lying. Opastay member FBI agent Robert Hansen was found guilty of spying for years. He was good friends and parish members with fellow Opus Dei member Louis Free, the then director of the FBI, who many claimed helped in the Oklahoma City bombing cover-up. We can't ignore the air of mystery and political intrigue surrounding the Opus Dei sect of the Catholic Church. But nevertheless, Father McGraw looked me dead in the eye and without blinking said, Yes, I saw the plane enter the building. Shinky Paik described witnessing his brother Edward Paik running outside and ducking for fear that the low-flying attack jet would hit him just before the shadow passed over his shop on the north side of Columbia Pike. Hello, my name is Shinky Paik, and you ask me... <laughs> okay, um, where were you on the morning of September 11th? While we were in the uh, sitting in the office, and we were listening what happened on New York um, World Trade Center, and 
there was a news said uh, the airplane hijacked and then it's coming this way and we're sitting and all of a sudden we heard some roaring and rumbling something is kind of hitting us very imminent things could happen so uh, we look at each other and it really uh, the noise is un unbearable and at the last moment my brother uh, jumped out the uh, office and as soon as he went out he was just scooping down uh, and then I'm sitting here and then standing and then I think at that moment the big airplane just uh, flew over as soon as he went out jumped out he was scooping down and on the, on the ground and then I think he he thought something hitting him and then I see here inside I saw here the uh, kind of uh, black out a little bit moment so yeah although Shinky did not see the plane the flight path that his brother Edward described and illustrated in 2006 fatally contradicts all official reports, data, and the physical damage. It almost hit these roofs over here. Yeah. So we saw it fly. It was coming from coming from, from, from like this way. Mm -hmm. coming from there to mm -hmm. this way. Okay. And then at the time, feelings it looks like it almost hit my roof, that much roof, kind of with the uh, body side, the, the build, over the building. And the wing is at this way. Oh, oh, so you're saying the body was over the building? Yeah, the little over here. The body is a over body here. Okay. Body's there, okay. The wing, wing is the right wing. That's, that's the direction. All of Ed's illustrations have the entire plane crossing to the north side of Columbia Pike, headed directly over the Navy Annex. Edwards' assertion that the plane crossed to the north side of Columbia Pike and flew directly over the Navy Annex has been corroborated repeatedly by several other witnesses who were in a variety of excellent locations to be able to judge. Were you between the wings of the Navy Annex or out on the... I was right at the edge of being on the outer portion, okay? So mm -hmm. and when the plane went right over the top of me, I was within 10 feet of the edge. I was inside, mm -hmm. flew over the top of me, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and which is like, it's right on the edge and I'm right here, mm -hmm. okay? If the Air Force Memorial had been built, the airplane would have ran into it. Right up there he came in between, what's that, the Elton and Navy Annex, and he started dropping. I looked up, looking in this direction, and I could see the plane over the corner of that, uh, the building there. What building? The uh, that would be the Naval Annex. Navy Annex? Yeah. As I looked over, I noticed the, um, airplane, nice size plane was coming in and it was like it may have been about no more than three feet above the Navy Annex when it was coming across from there. So at the time you know all of a sudden we seen a plane far as over the overhead over the um, Navy Annex coming from over. Where in relation to the Navy Annex what was the plane? Did it come uh, when to I saw the airplane he was uh, he was practically in front of the Navy Annex. It is also corroborated by the eyewitnesses' placement of the plane on the north side of the former Sitco gas station. 